Just say the word when it's recording and I'll start talking. You're starting now. Excellent. So welcome everyone to this um, uh, session or presentation of our upcoming game Summer Ramat. Uh, my name is Jon Manker uh, and I am the lead game designer of Ion Game Design and I also do quite a bit of game development uh, work or tasks in the projects we are working with. Um, and I will be doing the most of the talks probably, but yep. showing this. But we have, uh, of course, uh, also Besime, the games, uh, the game designer of Samir Ramat here. Yeah. Hi, everyone. And uh, she's also the um, uh, CEO of Ion Game Design. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to start there by saying I am uh, very happy and proud of having uh, such an excellent CEO that appreciates and sees the value in um, by, by praxis full on understand every part of the work and the business that she is running. Uh, so she has been over the years programming web pages, doing server scripts, uh, mm -hmm. making active bookkeeping, um, all things that she's supposed to manage, she wants to herself have done in praxis. And that's where the initial thought of Besime designing a game came from. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and just jump in whenever you want. I'm babbling on yeah. as usual, Thank you. So, uh, uh, as as we always do. Um, but I'm I'm continuing. So that's <clears throat> that's where the idea of of Basime doing a game uh, came from. <clears throat> However, the game idea in itself Basime had for a long time, I would say, or it was a natural yeah. choice um, mm -hmm. because of your background and also because of your uh, your father right yes uh, so the game idea when i decided to do a game uh, i knew immediately there will be about samaramat my father used to talk a lot about this assyrian queen that lived like 800 uh, uh, bc or 900 bc uh, and she ruled the Assyrian Empire for five uh, for five years uh, during a time when it was a lot of political uncertainty, and she made it stable before handing it over to her son. So, I wanted to do a game about this woman that uh, had such a strong impact. So, yep. Yes, and uh, talk about strong impact being ruler over an empire for five years. 3000 mm -hmm. years ago and the legend still lives mm -hmm. uh, so much that you you was brought up partly on on that as an important part of your you know figure mm -hmm. in your life um it's it's um so this game is is based on history and many of our games are based on science or history uh in various ways um and uh, this is about the Assyrian Empire and um, 811 BC. Um, the map is an important part of the game, um, and when it um, when you do game design, I would say. Uh, so I will I will explain uh, the game about the game. I will explain, but I will also explain about how we think when we do games at Iron Game Design and about. Um, how uh, the the development of the game and the mechanics of the game and the theme of the game and the vision of the game um, all are are all kind of linked together in the process uh, as we do it. Um, and the the map is or, or was an, is was a very important part of the base idea, which I have to say um, when Basime started designing this um several um, in in my experience there are usually bigger shifts from from the very early versions um and on to 
what the game actually ends up being uh, than some of the parts in Samuramat. One of them being the map, which was pretty early on clear uh, in how it was supposed to be done. Um, and it, it stayed that way. We have tweaked many, many small parts, but the big strokes are what it actually um, what, it, what you actually see today. Uh, <clears throat> in the map, you obviously have the Assyrian Empire, and then you have a few other geographical areas around it. Here, based on history, we decided that we don't want to have borders uh, and countries, country style like things, because um, at that time, according to what we could read about it, the, the cities were were kind of the important part. If you had a bunch of cities in an area, that area was yours, so to speak, or ruled by your culture. Um, whereas uh, there was no clear lines on where this started and ended, maybe. So that's portrayed by by the circles uh, and the cities being the important part of the game. Um, and this this kind of gives an extra dimension to um to the area so to speak in 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 the game sense because you have uh you have uh, a few big ones and i think it's like is it nine one two three four five six seven eight i know it's ten if you count damascus but that's a little special case so it's it's uh, nine different areas oh it, no it's ten actually with the kush down there sorry um so you have ten areas um since there are cities in the areas, each city has some strategic importance in the game. So it's almost like you have 30 different areas to think about, um, 30 or so. Uh, so it, it makes, um, since we each city has kind of its own value uh, from a strategic point, that made the, the map very interesting as far as the combination of, of historical background and strat strategy, in my opinion. Um, another thing that was early on decided or, or envisioned, I would say, by Basime and uh, uh, which, has been, which has stuck around, uh, was to have a structure of advisors. Um, from the beginning, from the very early beginning, this was not a cooperative game. Um, but, but very soon into the process, I would say, um, it became cooperative because it was hard to find appropriate player roles in a game where Samuramat was the obvious main character, so to speak. But how how you um, how how to how would you be a player that was trying to overthrow her? Um, that wouldn't tell the story, but Simon wanted to tell. And and I remember this being a little, um, uh, at least as I, I remember it, correct me again if I'm wrong, but this was a little, the first tough decision, so to speak. And it was very early, I have to say. Um, so you, you, because you like, uh, you know, all out war strategy games where you really punch, punch down each other. Um, yeah. And you have not been, you know, you, you, we have played a few, um, um cooperative Co games co mm. games yeah but it's not you it's uh the, it's not your favorite genre if let's put it that way <laughs> um mm. but again that's that's an interesting situation because then you have a lot of ideas on what's not really working in cooperative games and i think you have incorporated that in the process here and trying to you know make it better in the ways you think they can be made better and, and as such has made uh, i would say the cooperative experience here a bit uh, a bit richer i mean it has definitely made the, the it it as a very a fairly rich um cooperative situation where you have many pulls and levers and, and a lot of things to to talk about um so, but but the, as the, this thing that you are different advisors and and you were um, that's the role of the of the player. There was er, from early on the idea was no one should be Samuramat. Uh, so you are the advisors around the the, the queen. 
uh, and uh, uh, that has stuck and then uh, it's that's the way it's um, it is now as well um, and then rather early i would say um, this thing about resources came into the game uh, that you are you have to manage resources and the resources are um, reflecting what you need to control at the time uh, in order to control an empire you need a military uh, you need uh, a supply chain and, and a way to store grain, food, and, and other things, um, and to have control over that. And that also includes transportation. Um, and then you have the, uh, the Ashur, in this case, the religion. Uh, and of course, that was a very important part in Syrian Empire, that, that the, the, uh, the, the religion um, was something uh, associated with the leaders and um, and then the medicine to have a way of showing appreciation from from the people if it's healthy in in the country it's uh, people are happy um, so these part these are are things that deal with what you need to control in order to control an empire so it's and it's not only military it's not just pushing uh, horses and carriages around uh, it's it's about a little more uh, multitudes and then this was something i i didn't think this uh, part uh, with the wealth which is the different money so to speak the, the, the it's not resources it's the supply i mean it's uh, uh, the money in the game um are different goods and i thought that would go out <laughs> you came up with this idea pretty early okay. uh, um, not as early as the others but it, it was you know also when it's the game has become a cooperative game and, and we're testing stuff um sometime i don't know february march um and i thought it was too complex and it probably wouldn't be but it's still here and i think it works excellent because it's become a um, I mean, all of these, it's not that they are worth, one is worth five and 10 and 25 and so on. They are all individual. So so you have textile goods, copper, iron, gold, and uh, lapis, lap, uh, lapis lapsuli. Mm -hmm. um, and these are, which I really like these things when, 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 it, when, it's, um, when you get it integrated like that. They are integrated in the game and the history by where you can find them. So in this game, you can see here we have textile in Assyria, for example, and we have gold in Egypt and so forth. Uh, so you can you get these as a tax income when you control these areas, um, and then you use them as the payment, and you can you can trade them in trade centers. So instead of them being uh, one, five, ten, or such, they are all equally important, but you need to get the right mix in order to pay for some of your actions. Um, so it all became um, an interesting balance of having five different currencies, so to speak, that were equal in value and tied to the map. Um, and when we talk history, that's also something uh, I really like about um, about the game, how how history has how history has how Masima, I would say, because this is very much her contribution, managed to model the mechanics and the, the different parts of the game uh, relative to all the experience she has from before with Samiramat and also the extensive research she did on on the theme of Samiramat mainly during. 2020, 2020 and also mm -hmm. this year but I, you did quite a lot of, of research on this we have it was mm -hmm. roughly two years ago we decided to make this game and the first year uh, went mostly into thinking and researching and you, very preliminary sketches um, but there you have it and then then we end up with a game which has many many such interesting details that you that's not maybe obvious at the beginning, but that we have five different uh, uh, value, five different mm, goods, it's Good. called currencies, uh, and they are linked to uh, various parts of the 
bore in a way which is which is uh, historically correct and then that has been taken uh, to become an interesting mechanic uh, so so the basis is is from where that that is and the the another thing you researched was their um contribution to transportation networks and how they control transportation they had the royal road which was a very special uh, part uh, of their um, uh, trade networks and the royal road is here and it's drawn as a solid line that goes all the way from uh, is it from susa no it's it's from susa no. not from yeah. Russia. Yeah. so from okay. susa up to sardas and um, that has then been mm -hmm used to solve a design problem actually um pretty late in the game um so we had there was a problem with mobility uh and to have um you can do one to to move one step in the game is one action and to increase that to two steps will make the mobility uh to, to will give too much mobility and uh, you can't really go one and a half step so instead it's been a a solution where some of the characters has two steps uh one or two of them as a special action there is some things you can play and upgrade your characters to get another step but in front of all you have this royal road so as long as there are no enemies along it if you keep it free of enemies you can move one step takes you from anywhere along it to anywhere along it and um, so it's one step from Sardis to susa uh, as long as this is free um and that makes, I mean, it's another example of a solution to design problem that is linked to a historical background for once. And it's a solution which I also like that gives um, interesting strategic effects on the game. So apart from, from just moving fast, uh, there are the fact that if there are enemies standing somewhere, it stops this. So you, you have a reason to go and, and conquer these enemies for no other purpose than having the mobility restored um, and then since the since the enemies are moving autonomously on the board uh, these situations appear now and then uh, as small skirmishes and problems that you kind of need to deal with without us having to script it in any way it just becomes a part of the the the, the, the unscripted narrative that the game tells about the story uh, yes so that was a few of the things i wanted to say about how how the history um emerged into the game from an early state what do you have anything to add uh, Basima? i can say with the map some people might have noticed that we call them different things as well uh, like canon uh, there was several state formations there but for gameplay reasons, we did change uh, uh, the names as well. So that's the only thing I want to mention. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's that's a good mm -hmm. that's a good um, uh, that's a good point. And actually, a general point that can be said about making games this way, mm -hmm. uh, where you do um, take the history and make it into a game state. I used to work at a, a game company that makes digital games called uh, Paradox, which they're grand strategy games. And you have um, a game engine that can handle uh, up to 1 million different parameters simultaneously. Um, and of course, uh, then you can just <laughs> throw in, you know, truckloads of things that happens. And that makes the game come alive. When you do a board game, you, it's it's impossible. You can have uh, maybe, well, seven is kind of a limit. Eight is a lot to think about. If you have eight different parameters, then you're melting the brains of people, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, you really have to uh, abstract, or abs abstrahera, abstract, uh, take to an, a higher abstraction level, uh, maybe it's where um, various things and, and mold things together and so forth. Uh, so one of those were that there were several uh, city states uh, and state formations. Uh, the Phoenicians were here. We have Sidon Tyre. We have the interaction with Cyprus and 
I mean, Jerusalem. There was a lot of things going on here as it is today, and um, they're all been a little bit mashed together. Uh, some of these are actually um, also moved. I don't, I don't know if this is the very most recent map, but I know there are a few changes going to happen here with some of the places moving um, uh, due to historical correctness. Actually, I mean, we make a game and then we might put a road here just because it's good for the level design of the game, so to speak. But we also want to put things roughly where they actually were. So so we have moved little things around to get Damascus in a better place. We want to move it even further down because it's not really located up there. Um, but that's, uh, that's usually done at the very end um, because these are, um, if they're not putting game mechanical elements into the to the change uh, then it's a, a cosmetic change and then you don't want to do that and then having to do it again and again and again as the game uh, changes mechanically um, and um, yeah so so that's that's one part um, let's see i was thinking I mean, also, just so you all know who are listening here, whenever you want, just uh, start talking and say you. If you have any questions, you can ask ask any questions at any time, um, and just interrupt uh, the, the, the the what I'm telling here or Basim is telling. Um, so that was the historical backgrounds. Um, and then we have there were, there's something I've thought I was going to mention as well. Yes, so um, that was another uh, thing that was changing over the course of the game, I would say, uh, and have changed a few times. So Samiramat was in power for five years. And, and initially, the idea was to play a three-act situation where you played a little bit about the things going on before, and then during, and then after her reign and making it a 10, 10 turn game where five of the turns or really seven, f f f f uh, three to seven, I think we said it could be mm. prolonged or, or shortened somehow. Uh, but it felt a little plastered on, if that's an expression. Uh, and I know, I don't know, I, that's what, <laughs> what I remember from it. Um, yeah. we, we then changed it to be um, a, a number of years instead and then uh, you got a mission to accomplish uh, her reign um, over a number of years but then again that felt in more since we the game contains a number of different challenges which you can play and you play you have one challenge uh, and that's that's the game next time you play that you take one of the other challenges um, so we ended up also with simulation wise felt more correct to have the challenge shorter than a bunch of years so instead we ended up making the challenge a bunch of, bunch of months so now you're actually playing one um one of the challenges that samiramat face fa faced during her her reign in power and then you play another of these uh and there are a bunch of months going past so that's that's um but do you have any more comments on on this progression of the turn, Specimen? How how the thought process went? Uh, no, you covered it quite well. So we started with acts because I really wanted to have the years and just the story because this is for me is telling her story. So I wanted to have the story of um, when she was like her, when her husband was living as well because she was part of the military campaigns or what we can read. There's not much information about Samurama, but we, uh, uh, what we can find out is that she was part of the uh, military campaigns, for example. So I wanted to have that in the game, but it didn't really work out, as you said. So now it's just seven months and so, uh, seven events that is happening during those events. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Um, excellent. I I think I'm going to also 
spend some time now telling, describing how the game is played. Uh, I will give it a brief overview, um, but uh, just to, I think that's important as well since we are, it is a game after all. Um, uh, and we have, so in this game, you are one through five players. Um, and if you're playing each, when you're playing, um, you get one character. If it's a solo game, you get two. But otherwise, you choose one of the characters. Uh, the, now, the characters available <coughs> are the characters that you ha control, um, the air where you control an area. So you look at the icons uh, up here, and that's Assyria, and here is Phrygia, and so on. And here are all the Assyrian. So I, as long as you have Assyria, you have uh, five available. Uh, so you can always uh, do stuff, so to speak, with them. But if you have more of the different, let's see, are they up here? Yeah. So here are the other nine characters. So as soon as you uh, conquer a new area, you get access to a new uh, character. Um, and this, the, the goal of the game is to complete a um, challenge, in this case, the religious war. Uh, and there is some fluff and, and historical backgrounds. Uh, but by the end of a month, have three diviners, which are the religious uh, uh, resources on that board, the green ones. Have three diviners in Assyria, Phrygia, Canaan, Egypt, and Babylonia. Uh, so what you do in the game is that you uh, you have to complete this. Um, uh, that's that's that you check that at the end of each turn. And then uh, if you complete it, you have won the game. Uh, if not, you have lost the game. And there is also a bunch of other ways to lose the game on, on the way. Uh, up here on this board, uh, which are the supply board, if you go down to put, if, the, if the, everything goes back from the map to here, uh, at the end of a, of a, of a round, then you, di you die, you lose the game. Uh, and that's for all of them. So you, you can't be without uh, all of them. If you lose, if there are military going into Kalhu, which is the capital of the Assyrian Empire, you lose the game. Uh, mm -hmm. If um, Queen Samaramat gets, um, let's see now, is it that one? She mm -hmm. gets assassination attempts. And she, if she gets her third assassina assassination attempts uh, on her card, she dies, and then you lose the game. She can also be ambushed if she's walking around um, in the empire uh, and she gets ambushed by military from the opposing forces and dies. You lose the game. Uh, and there's one more, right? Uh, I think you covered it. So Maybe, yeah. Don't lose so, Kalu and make sure the resources are out and protect yeah. Samuramat. And protect Samuramat. Uh, so you have a bunch of things to, to avoid. But the, your goal is to, to make this um, um, the challenge, uh, to cl complete the challenge before a number of turns have passed. The number of turns you play are one, or are five, six, or seven, depending on how many players you are. Uh, so if you're two players, you play seven turns. Um, and these are tracked up here. So during setup, you take your challenge card, you randomize this or choose one. And let's say we have this. You flip it over. Uh, there are setup instructions here telling you how much military and medicine and supplies and such there are in uh, in each area. Um, and uh, so I had, I can set this up. Um, see, the four military here, and we have four military in Phrygia. And can you assist me in reading, Basima? Yes. Two in Babylonia, yeah, and one in uh, Egypt. One in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, and the first military you place, um, you place here in the this little space. So by the name, you see these symbols again from up here. So the first, mm -hmm. the first you you get in each of those, you place up in that. Um, little icon the other ones you can place in any way you want in the cities um, in that empire or in that um, area so and then we had supplies can you read them uh, one supply in assyria 
one in Phrygia. Yeah, put the first uh, and, one there, one in Phrygia, yes. And then one in uh, Egypt. And then we have diviners. It's one in Assyria, and then one in Egypt. And then we have health. It's two in Assyria. Two in one Assyria. In uh, one in Phrygia, one in Kana, and uh, one in Egypt. I think I got that right. Yeah. Uh, so these little four spaces up here, they they have uh, another meaning, another function, and it's that if you come, if you have all four uh, stuff in all four of them, um, then you take one of these nice little Ishtar gates and place it there because that means you now have control over this area. Uh, why is this a... uh, and two of those are in the setup of this game uh, complete so you have these two as your areas and that also stipulates um, elegantly i would say uh, i might say because i think it's elegant um, which characters you are playing with in the game um, so because we also have egypt you have this character as well in addition to the uh, Assyrian ones. And then if you happen to at some point conquer, for example, um, and make put put a diviner here so you get all four up there, then at the end of the, the turn you will check. And if you have such a situation, then you get an Ishtar gate. And for the next turn, you get those um, advisors to choose from as well when you do your actions. Um, Yes, so you set that up, and in addition, you put some enemy military out. Um, if you read those, uh, it's war in Urartu, war and in Urartu. then uh, two in Medes, you were in Medes, Urartu is in the top, yeah, and two in Medes, yes, and two in Elam, two in Elam, and then two in Kush. And then four in Cyprus. Two in Kush, four in Cyprus. Cyprus. And these are placed uh, as far away as possible from uh, Kalho. So in these cases, they are all in these remote areas. And they will start b walking over the map towards Kalho and, and be. Uh, a nuisance that you have to deal with. Uh, so that was the setup. Um, and then we also have a bag, which is an, an important little, little function, very good little <laughs> function, actually. Um, uh, it's effects. You do stuff and mm -hmm. things you do end up in the bag. And sometimes you have to draw from the bag. So things you do that might give you, it simulates that it might have side effects that comes back and bites you two turns later uh, depending on how the game goes and it's it's a beautiful little mechanic for for showing how uh, your actions have long-term effects and also for you know giving giving the story to the game which is something i or we at ion uh, really like when as a part of the games that you get unscripted narratives and you know that all right so we we did this action we we established this um road but we had to put some kind of public arrest token into here so probably people weren't that fond of this road and now we get this public unrest drawn to us so there's going to be a little war or skirmish somewhere and that was the angry uh, mob of whose land we took maybe uh, and in this one i think it's one of each into the yes. bag right plus yes. three of public unrest three of public unrest okay mm -hmm. Oh, public arrest. I think this really was correct.
All right. And then uh, you decide who you're going to be, each player. And you have these uh, uh, different advisors available. Uh, you also can see that that was in, not available because we haven't three, three at this point. The way. Then you decide who you want to be. Uh, they all start with five resources. Uh, she starts with gold because she's from uh, Egypt, and there the, the resource there is gold, and you can also see it on her card. Um, and the others have textile. Samuramat has none, and that's uh, as expected because uh, she never. One of her one of her special abilities is that she never has to pay anything for playing cards, which is what you pay goods for. But it's also uh, a special thing with her that no one can be her as your character. So you choose one of the others to be your personal uh, advisor. Mm -hmm. And in this case, maybe I should would choose to be um, uh, this character from Egypt, Aminette. And uh, maybe someone else who is playing would be the bodyguard, Basima here maybe. Uh, I think this name is changing or? Yes. Yes. Or is, was, is Basima going to be the name of one of the characters? I don't remember. <laughs> no. No, all right. There has been some of those. Um, one character was named Yoon uh, after me for a while, but that went away, of course. Uh, however, they will be, yeah, this is the bodyguard. All right. Um, and you also draw three of these Usher cards. And you're ready to go. You, you flip them over as well. When yeah. they are your personal, uh, no, no, the characters. Yes, true. Good, I forgot to say that detail. So the personal, uh, uh, there is a difference between Samuramat, which is very strong. Uh, the public advisors, which you can take action with, uh, and that makes the game very um, plastic, so to speak. You can you can do actions with different characters in a way you sometimes. Well, it's a, it's a little unique feature, I would say, for this game. Or you can do actions with your personal advisor. The benefit of the personal advisor is that the 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 uh, abilities is stronger. Uh, one problem with them, so to speak, is that no one else can act with this one. So uh, if these things are to be done, you have to do them, you as a player. Um, so when it's your turn, you can choose between doing something with your personal advisor, pretty strong, uh, or with uh, one of these uh, public advisors, a little weaker, but you have the, the variability, which is good. And they can also be positioned in different places because what they do takes place where they are, uh, uh, or Samuramat, which is very strong, but it's always the same thing she can do. So it's situational when you want to uh, act with her. Uh, and that uh, where you are are shown is going to be standees. And this will be um, about this height, five centimeters, I believe. And you can move them around uh, on the board. So. It's important that that becomes an important part of the game, which is also simulating how it was. You sent out strong advisors or parts of your court to do your bidding, and you couldn't do it in any other way than that people, messenger or or you know people that had your your power, uh, representing your power, went out and and acted. Uh, so it's a lot of planning on how you move your characters uh, and position yourself in the smartest way. Uh, so that's, and then we have one more thing for setup. We have the event cards. Um, so the game, as I said, is played in a number of turns. And if we are two players, you put seven event cards here. And those are the it's also the time clock, uh, the, the clock of the game. So after seven turns, if you haven't completed the goal, you failed. Um, and then what you do on each turn, um, uh, you have a number of actions. Maybe you can talk about them 
Basime, the actions on per turn. Yes. And since we are two players, you have three actions. Uh, if you're three players, you only have two actions. Uh, and then uh, I think five players have one action each. So depending on how many players you have, you have a number of actions. You can either uh, play a card, which is the Usher cards. Uh, so you have three in the beginning and you pull one uh, each round. Mm -hmm. Or you can uh, do a trade, um, or you can attack the enemies. So that's the three actions you have, uh, and movement, as you mentioned previously. So one step is one action, or one card is one action, or um, then attack or trade is one action. Uh, and then you, of course, can use the special abilities for your, each character also, or each advisor has their own special ability or special action that you can use. And they have special action and uh, persistent actions or persistence abilities that you can use. Yep. So in this case of Basim, uh, the special action is that she can draw three cards and the persistent ability that's always there is that she has counts for one defense uh, and mm -hmm. cancels assassination tokens if she's co-located with Samurama. Mm -hmm. um, and she can also carry a character as a resource. Mm -hmm. and, and this carrying is that when you move, you can move two of the resources along, including the army. Um, uh, and she can, de in addition, she can carry uh, characters um, along. And all of them have these different ones. Almanet here, for example, each diviner, which are the green ones uh, in Almanet's current area, counts as one defense in its location. So that's a very strong defense mechanism. But but you can't attack anything, and the troops, the enemies, will not be decimated. They will be just standing next to the border and waiting to jump on you if you ever get get weak. Uh, so you need to rally some troops in order to get rid of them. But uh, a very good defense, and she can also discard an Asher card and place two diviners where she is. So the Asher cards is is one of those things you could do. You can play one of these as an action, as Basina said, and they are pretty straightforward. Um, you have a cost. Uh, in this case, the cost is two textile, uh, and you have to put a public unrest to uh, token into the bag. And this is a Mule Express Royal Postal Service. So you start, um, they had a postal network and I think they had the most advanced postal network in the world at the time, right? Yes. You mm -hmm. did, yeah. So they did some innovations uh, around postal networks. Uh, and here's a card concerning that. Uh, and you get a reward. Uh, so if you pay these ones, play the card, spend your, your action on that, you get two two supply and one diviner in the area uh, where this is played. And again, just to make that clear, if if I am uh, Basime here, um, or which one was I looking at? No, I was looking at this one. If I am Aminette uh, and I'm located, let's see, where is Aminette? She's on the side uh, of the one. So she starts down here um, because she starts in the capital of her um, her, her uh, area. Um, so if I'm Aminette and I, I have this, uh, maybe maybe I don't want to, I mean, yes, I want diviners, but I don't need it down here for some reason. I as a player can play this card, but I choose to use Yunnan this turn. And then I have to use Yunnan for all my actions, but I can choose Yunnan. And then I will play it where Yunnan is, which in this case is up here. Um, in Frigia. So there is that flexibility, which, which is a, a very interesting uh, mechanic and the discussion that, uh, that really <laughs> goes mm -hmm. wild when you play the game and you are like three or four players and you have all these situations it's become uh, um, very, very good. I'm, I'm very pleased with how that has turned out to be a, a cooperative game where everybody are so involved in discussing, no, wait a minute, I, I walk up here because I have this card and then I take this. No, I need to do that. All right, then you can go here and get the card from me first and then walk up, and, you know. Uh, so so the, ca the player has the cards 
and the character mm -hmm. has the resources yes. Yes. and the location uh, and this little mix is is um, it, it just works very well um, so these are the the Azure cards and then yeah so when you when you do your turn uh, yeah. or when it's when when the each turn is played you follow a sequence of play which you see here there is a a each month uh, you start by drawing an event and if there are things on the map that spreads which are public unrest or plague uh, they spread and then you each draw a, an usher card and discard if you have above the hand limit of five uh, you check if some ramat is walking around alone then she might be attacked then the enemies attack which means that every enemy walks one step either closer the closest path they can do towards Kalhu, your capital or if they can they will walk somewhere where they can uh, attack you and win so in let's say just as an example if it looked like this um, uh, and it was this part of the sequence of play enemy attack these troops here enemy troops would not walk towards Kalhu because there is a poor little guy or girl down here in Ur uh, that will be attacked and eliminated. And attacks are uh, just one to one. So if they attack, uh, the military goes away and one of theirs goes away. But they won't attack in this case unless they can win. Um, so if it was instead like this, they wouldn't attack there. Instead, that would continue walking towards Kaldu. And that's the little little AI behind. Mm -hmm how these troops works uh, walks around and the, and the enemy um, moves and uh, it has the balance here when you when you do such a thing you want to do it as simple as possible but yet staying interesting and i think in this game even though the map is somewhat limited the fact that each city has its own value so to speak and also the fact that there is so many other moving parts that you need to take care of with all and and many of these uh, victory conditions has nothing to do with the enemy military so you, it's, they are not your main priority when you think about things then their movement on the map tends to become something you can't really put effort into it to it to prevent it all times and then it becomes a a, a interesting problem that you you need to take care of as you move along and, and the simplicity of it um, even though simple it, it really works um, so these ones walks this can't this this guys if it was looking like this then these would actually attack up here um, because the shortest route would be one two three those can't walk along the royal road so it would be one two three four five six and this way one two three four five so this would uh, would actually go here if because that's the closest path to Kalhu. But since there is a uh, little troop up there, they would move here, kill that one, and, uh, and then uh, be um, uh, one decimated. Uh, now it's important to know that um, if this is the first month, proceed to step seven. So you just jump past this if it's the first month otherwise it doesn't make sense um, that things happen you know, right after setup and things change so first month you just draw your uh, event and if it is in the setup that you have some some plague or something that's spreading and then you go to action phase and then the next turn you have this situation of the enemy moving um, and then uh, you have the uh, apply challenge and monthly effects which is um, on this card apart from it being uh, the win condition you also have a monthly effect that happens and it's it's public knowledge so you can you can really plan for this you don't know what what the events will bring and you don't know which azure cards you will get but that's where we limited the the randomness uh, there's quite a lot of open information uh, public information in this and there is randomness for sure but just enough to make the game um, different each time you play a certain uh, a certain um, challenge of course there are then 
at the moment 12 i think we're aiming for at least 15 different challenges included in the game and it might be more if when this game is on uh, i think there are, are more in the stretch goals right Basime? yes yes so it might be more depending on how the game goes in the uh, crowdfunding which is starting on tuesday uh, at gamefound uh, there might be more challenges in the game uh, but you have 15 i think now at least mm -hmm. and uh, then each of them will be different when you play them because of the events that might affect it and the cards you draw but that that's end and there, and there there is um, no. there is a die in the game uh, a dice uh, but it's only used for determining how powerful some of the usher cards are um, and that's also to make it a little you know a, a, a little this the situation that you can't always plan for everything and that's um we actually partly kept it also from historical purposes because it's it, it, you you weren't 100 percent certain on things you, it was uh, you really had to have a little bit of luck as well um but it's quite few random events in this game uh, random factors uh so um, yeah so you have this and you know what's going to happen the first the, the first turn is nothing because you jump that as we said before and then turn two three uh, they will put enemies in kition bastam goading ash uh, an shan and meroe uh, that will happen two times and then there's two militaries coming into other cities and then militaries again and this is um you need to put religion out uh, but there is a war kind of this is a religious war so there's a lot of troops coming out so in this particular challenge you you're going to have to focus on getting a lot of military out to handle all the enemies coming at the same time as you have to install uh tons of these ones out on the map uh, so that's that's how you're playing this one whereas another this one for example is have an ishtar gate in urartu elam medes and kush uh, that's more of a city building card where you have to make sure you spread all all these uh, tokens in various places out uh, i mean kush is, is down here um so you really go th that's an expansionist uh, challenge um and another one could be have no enemy units on the map and have 15 of your military on the map at the end of a month so that's that's more all in military operation and this plays quite differently uh in how what you need to to think about and what how events um uh, may cause problems uh for it um and at the start of each turn you would flip one event and in this one it says um so this is you can see where it takes place and this one is in egypt uh, it's the icon up in the left uh, and it's a public unrest uh, due to relocation and this was something they did as well wasn't it they they that was a, a, a way of of waging power uh the assyrians right yeah would really uh, yes it was so they moved uh, when they conquered an area they deported them um, to other uh, cities to control them and stop rebellion in that way but they also used it as um to increase um, trade in some areas. So if you had a, a certain profession that you knew well, you could, you and your family would move to another part of the empire. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so in this one, you would remove two of the uh, health from here uh, in, in Egypt, and you would have to remove two supply. And you don't have that. So what happens then? Well, then you have to put the corresponding tokens into the bag and um, uh, so you would remove one which is one supply and you would remove one health and then unfortunately you will have to put negative tokens in the bag because this will come and bite you so the supplies will put public unrest into the bag and we can see it on the icon here what's the, what's what's going in there and health uh, puts a plague token in the bag which increases the risk of a plague breaking out on later turns um uh, and then um you have to uh, add three enemy military in kush so the militaries are taken from here take those three 
So there are more military coming in here. So it's a really big force that's going to come walking up here. So in this case, you would probably want to put a bunch of military here to save uh, Amunet. Um, and that's that. Uh, that was really happening first. And then you do um, your your actions, and everybody decides two or three actions that they're going to do depending on what's available, and discuss where you want to go, how you want to spend the um, goods that you have and already here at the start of the game due to this event uh, if the event would have been something else uh, like taking care in Babylonia or something we probably would have looked there but now we really have to do something about the situation in Egypt with the loss of those two resources here makes us at the end of this turn lose the Ishtar gate if we don't replenish them and uh, not now but uh, one two turns away, there's going to be troops moving in here. We know that it's going to, they walk one step each turn. So we know we have a little time, but turns go fast. So um, uh, that's the situation we probably want to deal with. Um, and then you do your actions and come to the end, check if you have Ishtar Gate somewhere, if the if you completed the, uh, the end goal or if, if you're dead for some reason. Um, and then the game goes on. And the last thing I want to say is that if you die in this game, because you can't die, I'm Amunet here, and if Amunet dies, well, then I can't take any more actions. Amunet is gone from the game forever uh, until you play the next time. Um, and hey, what I'm going to do now? Is this player elimination? No. I can still do things with uh, Slamiramat and the public characters. So we have this pretty harsh situation with characters actually <laughs> dying. Uh, but it still it still works well because you can do actions with the ones out here. Uh, and if I fail this, if I have an early stare, let's say we come to to turn five or six, and we see this is impossible, we're never going to make it. The game is not over because uh, well, you can if you want. You can play one card, and then um, uh, the game you might feel so, but you you still get points for how well uh, the the game is how well you did, so to speak. So you can compare with other times when you didn't complete the mission. And you get more points, obviously, if you complete it. But as an extra thing, which I really like, is that we have made rules for that you can play consecutive challenges after each other. So this one we had here about the religious war turned out to be these seven events. And then if you want, you can, and when this is done, you can randomize a new one. And instead of doing the setup, you just use the board as it is. You don't know which one it's going to be, but if you decide that, all right, this is not going so well, we're going to fail. But hey, let's put the, the empire in a good state for whatever our next challenge will be. And that keeps the interest up in the game, even though it's gone bad and we don't really manage uh, the win conditions. You can play up to five different uh, um, challenges after each other. Um, of course, you can play more, but we we are we are testing and balancing the game for for working with up to five of these uh, in a row, which will end up being uh, millions of potential Samuramat sagas to be played if you if you play them in different combinations. And uh, yeah, I, I really like this sense of having an end condition affecting a start condition you get a, a bigger quest line or, or no storyline um, uh, moving through the game and see her uh, and also another thing I would say the five making it five um, as what we designed for is because she was the queen for five years so this could be the five of these would be the rendition of how her reign was in in the saga that you played at that time. And the next time you play it, uh, her five years will be different if you play all of them. Um, yeah, uh, play time of this is maybe, I would say one to two hours, depending, closer to mm -hmm. one hour if you are, um, if you know the game. Um, but uh, if you are five players and do a lot of discussion, uh, it might be two hours. So play a full for five of these might not be something you do uh, in in one day, um, five players at least, but um, it can be, and uh, I think it's a a great uh, experience, and it could be 
two days, of course, and so forth. Yeah. And I don't know if it's been apparent, but the complexity wise, we have tried to balance an interesting mix of choices with something pretty straightforward. So it's um, it's approachable for not you need, don't need to be a super experienced player to to appreciate the game. Um, but we still want to, as always, give a you know flavor of of the more complex board gaming beauties uh, in our games. Um, yeah, anything else you want to say about that, Basile? No. Is there any questions for us? No. One question I have, and I think you, I think you actually just hit on it, but does the mm -hmm. playtime change markedly with how many people that you add to it? Have you found in your experience a two-player game versus a five-player game because of the conversation, the negotiation of what yeah. you know, the best way to respond to a threat would be, or the best way to plan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I would say yes, but it doesn't. It's not linear uh, because mm -hmm. the discussion is usually longer but when you discuss the the actions you take go pretty fast uh, because you have decided all right let's do that and you do that and you do that and then you do the actions so it's not uh, as in in a, a um, uh, player versus player game it's usually if you're four players it tend to take about twice the time as if you're uh, um, ah, well there are there are also of course uh, you know clean up situations and such but it's it's not prolonging the game as much mm -hmm. but i would say for if a two-player game takes maybe 45 minutes to one hour uh, a five-player game takes one and a half to two hours depending yeah because there is a lot of discussions in the games there is a lot of uh, choices you have to make since yeah. there's things happening all over the map <laughs> yeah and also if you are mm -hmm. I mean, re the the actual moving of parts. If you are five, five players, there are more movings that needs to be done. Although there are fewer actions as well, so it's uh, the total number of actions are not that different. It differs between, for the total number of actions in the game, so to speak, which is a balancing factor, uh, goes from I think thirty between thirty eight and fifty two or something. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Excellent question. More excellent questions. So well, the game uh, will be on GameFound on November 16th. That's when we're launching it. And the estimated shipping is in June next year. So just want to say that as well. Yeah. Okay, great. I, and one thing, if you don't mind me mentioning it, it is posted in the text channel, but just to remind folks, uh, ION has been courteous enough, and we really appreciate it on behalf of the convention, uh, a 20% discount code. And there's a lot yes. of great titles that are out, and there's a lot of great titles that are coming. So if you haven't gone and checked out ION's collection of games, this is a great time to, to do that. Yes, yes, and this is uh, available throughout the convention until Monday, so it's a few days. It's not you have this window, uh, so then it's uh, then it's gone. But yes, yep. and we really, again, we really do appreciate that. It's very generous of you, Ion. Excellent. Thank you. Happy to do so. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Uh, we don't have anything more so thank you for listening in um, yes thank you so much and um, mm -hmm. hope you uh, get the chance to play the game at some point and uh, mm -hmm. that you get uh, that it is as fun for you as it is for us and i'm i'm really happy how this tackles the the co-op co co game uh genre so to speak uh, and and um how Basim has taken it to to that, and I have to say, I am I am impressed with how good of a game designer Basim is at her first attempt, uh, and that's that's coming 
that is the truth and it's coming from the heart so uh, that's awesome and and one other not a question but a comment before we close out i was looking on board game geek because i was curious how many historical conflict simulations or or historical board games in general are cooperative in nature and it there isn't a long list there's things like underground railroad and rebellion 1775 so to me yeah this is a great i i personally really enjoy co-op games and so to yeah. me this is something that really fills an interesting niche an underserved niche in the industry so i'm super yeah, excited that's to to see this come to market yeah thank you good great to hear All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, Thank and, you so much. Uh, you're welcome, and hope to. Uh...